Hello everyone, today the finale in my little feature on French fancies. In the last video we looked at the beautiful but deeply flawed Clio V6. That car's biggest problem was always its own stable mates, the 172 and later 182. Because they were a lot cheaper back then, they're a heck of a lot cheaper now, and they are just as quick and a lot easier to run. If you agree with that sentiment and you want to buy a 172 or 182, but you still want something a little bit special, look no further than this. This is a 2005 Clio 182 Trophy, and it's presented here in what I can only describe as time warp condition. So today the exciting final instalment in my quartet of iconic performance Renault hatchbacks. In real life I've actually just gone out of the Clio Williams, but the last video you'll have seen will have been the Clio V6 that in practice I actually drove a couple of weeks ago. The V6 was exciting but for me thus far it's the Williams that is actually the benchmark in terms of excitement. Originally. I wasn't planning to feature this car at all, but my good friend and assistant Darren got a little bit unnecessary over it for one reason or another. I can't quite imagine why, and he asked if we had time, could we take it out? And I thought, you know what, why not, let's. I said that this was a time warp condition car, and I really do mean it. There are fewer than 17,000 miles on the clock, and the rear tires, are original. So you'll forgive me if this isn't a real hell for leather, go for broke kind of driving that I'm doing today. This is more a showcase of what the car is about. So what is the 182 Trophy all about? Most of the changes made to the car really are cosmetic, I suppose you could call them. You've got the wheels off a 172 cup, you've got this capsicum red paintwork, the glory of knowing that it's one of only 550 cars, 500 for the UK market and curiously 50 for the Swiss, with none being made for anywhere else. You also have the same spoiler what you'll have seen on the Clio V6, silver stickers on the side and the sole significant mechanical change, the fitment of Saks remote reservoir dampers. What does that do to the Clio? Let's find out. It's certainly got more pull than the Williams, even if it is missing some of that iconic early 90s twin cam soundtrack. This is a little more muted through those admittedly good looking twin X exhausts at the back. It rides this road fantastically though. Oh, it steers beautifully. Really, really nice. The gearbox feels pretty much the same as the Williams and it is also a five speed item. I wouldn't even be surprised if it's actually the same gearbox. This being a member of the Clio 2 family, it's curious because this feels like a totally different interior to the Williams. The Williams is a sort of alien thing to me. I don't really remember being in cars like that. But this, I'm instantly in a Clio. More importantly, you smell it and it smells the exact same as my old Renault Sport Megane. Very distinctive aroma in here. You've still got great visibility. It hadn't been ruined by this point in time by all the different legislation that we have to contend with now. And it's actually not as stiff as I thought it might be. This road's pretty well paved as it happens, but also helping the comfort in this car is the fitment of these Recaro seats. I gotta be honest, they're not as good as in the Williams. The Williams seats were a level of perfection few can ever aspire to. These are simply good. They're not even great, actually. I, I prefer the seats you get, say, in a Fiesta ST, something like that, or a Focus RS. I, I want something to give me a, a little bit more hugging, 
really, in a, in a car that's as capable around a corner as this. I know that this car's owner, who incidentally would love you to follow him on his Instagram, gets quite a bit of stick about the low mileage on this car. And I would admit that I would normally be the first person to criticise him and say, how dare you do so little driving in what is arguably regarded as one of the finest affordable driver's cars. But when you've got a collection of nearly 30 different vehicles, I can understand why doing so might be difficult. Here we go. Oh, a higher RPM, this thing responds really sharply. Still not the ultimate word in speed, but you've got just enough of it to really enjoy on a country lane. Gets to the national speed limit that much faster than the Clio Williams, the extra power probably being offset almost entirely by the extra weight. Still not a heavy car, and if the numbers are of interest to you, here they are. What's of interest to me is the corner coming up. Here we go, tip it in, brakes, progressive, nice, dip right, heel toe, holes are lined beautifully, quick bit of power, off the power, in, ride it, power up, pulls around, out, yes, yes, yes. I once owned a Renault Sport Megane, heavily modified, hated it, hated, hated, hated it. it wasn't a car I really actively bought, long story, boring story. People wax lyrical all the time about French hatches. Oh, clear 182 this, clear 182 that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Twaddle, absolute twaddle, and never listen to any of it. I expected this to be something of a disappointment. It's not. This is marvellous. The big problem, the big problem you're still gonna have to pay very good money to get one of these, even with some miles on it. And I know we're not really talking about money this month, but you can't ignore it entirely. The Clio V6 is, is too much. It's just far, far too expensive. The Williams itself, you can look almost a, as a classic car. And the 182 has not really got to that stage yet. However, this trophy, it's tight, it's fun. It feels awful, nasty, cheap in here. And I don't think it's really all that much to look at but to drive, it's a real special thing. And this is a proper little hot hatch. The surprise of the week for me was the Clio Williams, because I think that was the complete package. Not quite as dynamic as this, but sounded great, but looks good, is a very special thing indeed. But equally, this, this is a hell of a thing. The disappointment, I guess, in many ways was the V6, because, well, it never ever was going to live up to, I don't even know what its reputation really is, because its reputation is for being too expensive for what it is, and that I guess is very true. This and the Williams, pure French Renault magic. The Renault 5, a nice car, but this, proper driver's car. Thanks for watching, please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already. See you for the next one. Bye-bye.